this year, um, the very cool thing is that every county in Texas is doing this um, reading at their courthouse steps. I believe most of them are today, but it's supposed to be simultaneously, but every county is doing it. And as you guys know, the Declaration of Independence is so important because this is what was written to say, um, we all have rights, okay? You're not gonna take those away from us. This is our revolution. This is what's important to us. And so I'm very, very proud that all these criminal defense lawyers are behind me to read the Declaration of Independence and say, these are our rights and we're gonna stand up for them. And so we're going to begin. Thank you. And I get to start because I'm the president of the local Texas uh, Criminal Defense Lawyers Association known as the uh, Coastal Bend Criminal Defense Lawyers Association. And the majority of these people back here are members. Um, I'd like to point out Tim and Cochran who really dressed for the <laughs> RJ Torres and Jimmy Granberry shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Declaration of Independence. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the equal, the separate and equal stations to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evidences a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right and it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former system of government. The history of the present King of Brit Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused his assent to laws the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance, lest suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to it. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers, incapable of annihilation, 
have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of the states for that purpose obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. He has effected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. For quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, For protecting them by mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us in many cases of the benefit of a trial by jury, for transporting us beyond, beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses. For abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. For taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our government for suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. <coughs> He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, dissolution, and tyranny, uh, already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy, scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages, and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against that country to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to fall themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic insurrections amongst us, and he has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruct destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in attention to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by the legislature to extend unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, they got that one, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. 
they too have been deaf to the voice of justice and consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war and peace friends. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved and that as a free and independent states they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Following are the representatives of the United Colonies that Mr. Granberry referenced. Georgia, Mr. Button Gwinnett, Mr. Lyman Hall, Mr. George Walton, North Carolina, Mr. William Hooper, Mr. Joseph Hughes, Mr. John Penn, South Carolina, Mr. Edward Rutledge, Mr. Thomas Hayward, Jr., Mr. Thomas Lynch, Jr., Mr. Arthur Middleton, Massachusetts, Mr. John Hancock, Mr. Samuel Adams, Mr. John Adams, Mr. Robert Treat Payne, Mr. Elbridge Jerry, Maryland, Mr. Samuel Chase, Mr. William Paca, Mr. Thomas Stone, and Mr. Charles Carroll of Carrollton. Virginia, Mr. George White, Mr. Richard Henry Lee, Mr. Thomas Jefferson, Mr. Benjamin Harrison, Mr. Thomas Nelson Jr., Mr. Francis Lightfoot Lee, Mr. Carter Braxton, Pennsylvania, Mr. Robert Morris, Mr. Benjamin Rush, Mr. Benjamin Franklin, Mr. John Morton, Mr. George Clymer, Mr. James Smith, Mr. George Taylor, Mr. James Wilson, Mr. George Ross, Delaware, Mr. Caesar Rodney, Mr. George Reed, Mr. Thomas McKean, New York, Mr. William Floyd, Mr. Philip Livingston, Mr. Francis Lewis, Mr. Lewis Morris, New Jersey, Mr. Richard Stockton, Mr. John Witherspoon, Mr. Francis Hopkinson, Mr. John Hart, Mr. Abraham Clark, New Hampshire, Mr. Josiah Bartlett, Mr. William Whipple, Mr. Matthew Thornton, Rhode Island, Mr. Stephen Hopkins, Mr. William Ellery, and finally Connecticut, Mr. Roger Sherman, Mr. Samuel Huntington, Mr. William Williams, and Mr. Oliver Walcott. Thank you to these gentlemen. Thank you all so much for coming. Happy Fourth of July. There are cupcakes that I did not make, and I think that they are probably good. I'm so happy.